Greetings. It's teardown time today. What we have here are a pair of Oxford Maximizer 3800 battery chargers. This one on the right belongs to a friend of mine. He's given it to me to take a look at because it's not working properly. Those weren't his exact words. I think you can guess the word he used. But typical, I've plugged it in and it's behaving itself at the moment. This one is mine. As you can see, it's not very happy. There seems to be an intermittent problem with it because even dropping it from that much, you can see, will have a di will have an effect on what it's doing. So that's the one I'm going to open up and take apart. They've both had issues where they'll run for so long and then they'll go into standby, which is no good because it'll charge the battery up, but when it's in standby, it'll flatten the battery again. So you've got to keep an eye on them. This one. I've had smoking in the past where it got itself into such a tiz. I had to disconnect it to stop it setting fire to itself. They're really... They look very fancy and what they claim to do is very fancy. But in practice they don't seem to be very reliable. So I'm going to crack this one open so you can see what's inside it and hopefully I can get it to, to work a bit better where it can actually survive being knocked about. At least reasonably. Meanwhile I'll leave that one on charge, charging up my jump starter. Safety first of course, disconnected from the mains. I've already taken the screws out and this is what you get inside. Take out this one screw here, which anchors the corner of the board, and I should be able to lift it out like that. There's the underside, not a lot to see on there. A few surface mount components down there. On the back of the display board that's a Holtec HT1621B which is just an LCD controller. With the heat sinks removed you can see we have IC1 which is just an EL817 opto isolator. IC2 tucked away down here. That's an OB2269CP PWM controller. Then we have right next to L right next to L3, which is actually partly broken there, which doesn't help. We have IC3, which is an MC34063 switching regulator. And we have IC4, which is an LM339M. IC5 is a mystery chip. There's nothing written on it at all. It looks very pickish, if you like. There's nothing written on it. IC6 is the Holtec HT1621B on the LCD controller. Apart from that, then we have the transformer in the middle, which, as you can see, is not really held down with much. It's It's got the solder pins at this side, but there's no solder pins on that side at all. It's all on these heavy connections here. One thing of note is the heat sink is connected to this insulated tab component here, which is a magnet chip MDF7N60. I think. And that's an insulated tab, so at least the heatsink on here shouldn't be live. And they do have a uh, they do have a thermocouple on there to monitor the temperature. Apart from that, there's nothing really special to report. Just a relay on the end, which I think switches between the two main between charge mode and maintain mode. I think when it does the bulk charge, that kicks in. Now I've already tried resoldering all the connections on the bottom side of this board once. 
because I knew that if you tapped the board it would cause the thing to go off. What I haven't done yet is resoldered all these surface mount connections on the top side and obviously the problem's, the problem's still there so that's what I'm going to do as the first thing to try. I would have put a schematic up on here but there are there are wires going underneath the relay, underneath the, the chips here. I'd have to desolder the whole board really to figure out what on earth goes on here. But I will resolder all these connections and see if it makes a difference. Right, that's the surface mount stuff resoldered, including this connection up here for the 12 pin flexi cable. So I've resoldered this, 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 and that as well, basically anything that's surface mount on this top side. I said that one's already done last time. I've tested this manky looking flexi cable as well, that's actually working fine. So let's get the heat sinks on there and give it a test. That's the heat sinks fitted. I've just noticed that there are connections here going down to one side of the primary on the transformer and they actually connect to one side of the heat sinks. So that will be live just to be bloody awkward. That's all back in. Notice the way the ribbon goes. To get the ribbon the right way up, that is the right way up with the pins uppermost on there and lowermost on that one. So actually the ribbon lines up when it's that way. You've got to twist it to put it together. Strange design, but there you go. Let's see what happens when we power it up. Oops. Sod all. Again. They're not cheap, so I'm going to resist the urge to smash it at bits and have another crack at it. Okay, <clears throat> here we are back at the desk two days later. I've still been looking at this board and I think I found what was wrong with it. Now, I did say I wasn't going to bother doing the circuit diagram because it's components underneath the relays. Sorry, the tracks underneath the relays and all sorts. It's a real nightmare to try and track out. But I ended up tracking out what I could and then tracking a little bit more and then tracking a little bit more and before you know it I've got an awful lot of circuit diagram. You can see here the MC34063 which I think is used as a step up configuration because this charger is capable of putting out about 17 volts to try and recondition a battery, try and bring it back from the dead. But then we've got this other circuit here, which I think brings it back down and powers these chips, the LM339 and the mystery chip that controls it all. Now when looking through, trying to figure out what the values were for these, I thought, right, okay, I think that's 15 ohms. But when I measured it, it was showing about half a meg ohm, sorry, a half a K, and it was creeping down slowly. So I thought, right, I'll desolder that just in case, and it snapped in half when I desoldered it. So I think that is the component which smoked up when I had a fault not long after I had this charger. I've taken the other charger apart just to confirm, and yes, it is a 15 ohm resistor, and here's where it is on the board, right up in the top corner. There's plenty of room inside this case to take a normal resistor instead of this scrawny little surface mount. So I'll have a look in my resistor tub and see what I can find. I think that's big enough to cope. Use the resistor soldered in. Rather than soldering it on the bottom, I've traced the tracks back to one side of D9 and one side of Q1 and soldered it top side of the board straight to the component legs. Now one thing you can see with this charger is that this circuit not only takes its power from the switch mode power supply, 
it can also take its power from the battery that's connected to it. So I can test this quite safely without connecting to the mains just by hooking it up to the battery. So I've got my crappy old jump starter with the decent battery in it. Bingo. Back from the dead. As you can see the bizarre thing with this is it'll even try to charge when there's no mains. But you just got no current reading. If I give it some some juice now. Oops, there we go, it's trying to go into recovery mode and then charging. Flip into car mode. All working fine. Can I recommend them? Well, yes and no. Yes, because they can bring batteries back from the dead. Although sometimes you'd have to give it a kickstart with another battery, with a reasonably good battery, just so this recognises there's a battery connected, and then you can disconnect and let it do its thing with the, with the dead battery. What I don't like about it is it seems to knock itself to standby for no apparent reason. Now whether that's because it overheats, I don't know. You did see inside it's got a thermistor sitting on top of the switch mode power supply's heatsink. So it may be that it gets too hot and shuts itself down. I don't know. But at least it's working and if you got one of these and it just dies, you can see you now the first place to look is R43 up in the corner of the board. It's supposed to be a 15 ohm resistor. If you're getting anything other than 15 ohms, change it out. Thank you for watching.